Hi, I'm Alex Sloboda, and for my summer research project, I worked on the attitude determination and control of nanosatellites, specifically the RACS, or Radio Aurora Explorer, being developed here at the University of Michigan under the direction of Professor James Cutler. We're sponsored by the National Science Foundation. We're a collaboration between the University of Michigan and SRI in California, who's building the payload. Here at U of M, we build the rest of the spacecraft, and at SRI, they build the payload receiver, which I'll get to in a bit. Our co-investigators are Professor James Cutler in the Aerospace Department and Dr. San Bakivan from SRI International. So, what does RACS do? We study these things called FAI, or field-aligned irregularities, which is basically space weather in the lower ionosphere. We want to study these because they disrupt the communication and tracking of spacecraft, and we really don't know too much about them. Their formation is not predictable, and we can't mitigate it. So we want to figure out more about these things so we can get around them and have good communication with our satellites. Ground radar beams do not always meet something called a bi-static uh, configuration, which we need to be able to study these correctly. As you can see from the diagram, there's no way that we could study these from the ground. So to get the bi-static configuration, we have to put a satellite up. So this is Pfizer, which is a phased array radar. And what we do is we bounce these radar pulses off of the field-aligned irregularities. We pick them up with a turnstile antenna at the top of our satellite, as you can see here on the next slide. And uh, the payload receiver interprets that data, and uh, that's how we study our field-aligned irregularities. Now, in order to get good measurements, we need accurate knowledge of our pointing direction so we can know an our antenna gain. And that's where I come in. I worked on the attitude determination system of RACS. And this is what you see here, the attitude determination board. And I've brought an attitude determination board prototype with me as well. You can see here we have a three-axis magnetometer. That's our primary method of attitude determination. An inertial measurement unit with gyros, accelerometers, and calibrating temperature sensors in it. A processor here to tie the whole thing together, the MSP430. And on the back, an SD card. We store data just like you would on your digital camera at home. So one of the great things about my research was I was able to design and build this whole system from the ground up. And it was a lot of fun. It connects to things on the uh, peripherals of the spacecraft, like sun sensors, temperature sensors, and a two-axis magnetometer, as you can see on this evaluation board. And I brought along a solar panel, which I designed as well, with the same sort of circuitry on it. This one isn't populated, however. So we've developed the Helmholtz cage back in our lab to test this instrument. Uh, it, it's driven by MATLAB, uh, which drives these power supplies and runs current through 60,000 feet of copper wire, generates a magnetic field in any direction. We use that to test our magnetic attitude determination. So basically, we've got Satellite Toolkit, or STK, running an orbit propagator and letting us know exactly where we are and what the IGRF, or a form of global magnetic reference field, is at that exact point. Uh, the IGRF gets translated to voltages, which uh, gets translated to the power supplies and fed into the cage, so we generate our magnetic field. Then we pick it up with the attitude determination board. We give it back to MATLAB, which compares it with what we said the IGRF was from the SDK simulation, and that's how we test our magnetic attitude determination. So here's a picture of the ADB attitude determination board on its test stand in the Helmholtz cage. And here's a picture of an air bearing, which we also use in the Helmholtz cage. Basically, we float this sphere on a cushion of air. We turn it in any direction, and it allows us to sense, you know, rotation and uh, rate and change not the magnetic field in the cage, but actually our orientation. So we can test our system that way as well. Example plots that we might get from such a data analysis. Uh, the one on the left is oscillatory because we were uh, running a constant magnetic field and uh, turning the magnetometer around on one axis. So there's a little bit of a problem with magnetic attitude determination. A single three-axis measurement sample will only provide unique two-axis determination. For instance, if your spacecraft was oriented around the green vector with the arrow by it, and then you took that green vector and at the same time rotated it around the, uh, the, the B field line there and revolved it around its own axis, no, I'm sorry, revolved it around the B field line and rotated it about its own axis, you'd end up with non-unique magnetic readings. 
In other words, you'd have two different places in space where the magnetic field readings would be exactly the same. So there's a problem there. We either need to use rate and give it initial position, which we do with our GPS receiver, which provides this position, or we need to supplement with extra sensors, such as the inertial measurement unit. And that we do. To tie it all together, we use a Kalman filter, which basically, it takes a bunch of data and says, okay, here's where we are now. Based on this data, here's where we think we're going to be in the future. How does our future measurements compare to that? And eventually we converge on an accurate attitude determination solution. So in conclusion, magnetic determination is supplemented with position and time data uh, from, and attitude data from other sensors. And in my research, I was also able to develop uh, the onboard software uh, that brings all this system together and runs on our processor. It's pretty efficient. Uh, it has diagnostic capabilities. And it can control sample rate, power, and manage all of the data. So in the future, I'm going to continue to be optimizing the software. I'm eventually, on the next racks, going to have real-time attitude determinations and real-time attitude control from this board in space. Uh, however, right now, we're on a very tight schedule, and we have to launch, we have to deliver in about uh, one month. No, two months. So that's not an option for right now. But that's what I'll be doing in the future. And uh, all in all, this research program has been great for me. I've been able to work with hardware and software and a lot of really interesting attitude determination problems. So thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.